Hey everybody, happy Friday. Uh, another damp one. <laughs> the flooding doesn't seem to be too bad on my run this morning, but it is it is damp out there. Um, I am very glad not to be driving into Hartford today. I did a lot of driving in the early morning and in the evening when the sun is uh, at that very difficult angle um, to see and in the rain and in the fog. And I'm, you know, very glad to be off the roads uh, today and, you know, for the most part for the next couple of days. Um, I am now sort of, I've been talking a lot in at least the last few sessions about all these 20 minute meetings I've been having that, that sometimes feel kind of scattershot. But now I, I have to say I'm in the position where they are knitting together and then paying off because I have that background of of having had all those meetings. So I wanted to give you a couple of quick examples of that. So for example, last night I went to uh, the dinner, the Litchfield County Farm Bureau annual dinner um, and legislative meeting. Um, not only enjoy the delicious food, once again prepared by Teresa Freund, a uh, local hero, and um, and talk to a lot of local agricultural leaders, uh, my colleagues who are also there, and for the Farm Bureau to talk about its legislative priorities. Now, um, because I'd already met with the Farm Bureau about their legislative priorities and local farmers and the farm wineries and met with my own fiscal analysts about starting to run the numbers on the proposals that they're making this year. Uh, we were I was we were in a position to advance the conversation instead of having the same one again and again, which really helps, particularly uh, with a short session this year. We're not going to have that much time. And so the more you can get organized and ahead of things, the better. So that really felt like uh, things were paying off. That's also true for various educational initiatives that came up last night. It has been last year in particular, we had a big push in the legislature to on um, education funding and reform, and that uh, produced some very positive results for agri-science programs throughout the state, but particularly out here. Um, and we have to make sure that we follow through to make sure that that continues. And so that, again, knitting together previous conversations into, into one place really helps that. That was also true with respect to a variety of healthcare related uh, conversations I had on one particular day. I started the day at Charlotte Hungerford um, uh, and Hartford Healthcare, their parent company, talking about, you know, what's going on there. And part of what we covered related to, um, uh, you know, obstetrics and maternal health. And uh, later that day, I had a, uh, was on a round table that the Comptroller Sean Scanlon pulled together on maternal health. Um, a lot of people in that room, a lot of really good people, knowledgeable people, um, and people who have been working on this issue across the state. Um, I think, unfortunately, there were too many of us in the room for it to be a productive one-hour meeting, but but I think it started a lot of other conversations, and we came out of it with a strong list. But but the overlay, um, and and that we had a few advocates for Sharon Hospital were in were on that roundtable with me, Jill Drew and, and um, Lydia Moore. Um, to talk about, to have the overlay of a meeting with Charlotte and looking at what they're doing and hearing about, you know, what's happening at Sharon Hospital with respect to maternity and how the two don't necessarily line up. And we have to make sure that they do uh, in order to to protect uh, people in the corner. Um, but it also, you know, those meetings relate to to first responders and, you know, meetings I've had with, you know, uh, various first responders across the state and, and working on things like the cost of ambulances um, and gun violence intervention. Those all knit together and, and it helps to have you have deeper conversations once I've been able to have those scattershot 20 minute ones um, on the, you know, sort of finance end of things. Uh, having a lot of meetings in the last week with um, statewide officials, uh, I had a meeting with the treasurer's office, had a meeting with the Department of Revenue Services, had a meeting with um, uh, the comptroller actually later on today talking about his initiatives. Um, and so that's helping us knit together the schedule for the next few weeks uh, with my, my co-chair trying to figure out the priorities we can do this year. I also just want to make a quick note. I'll put this in the newsletter. Uh, one of the smaller topics, actually, that we discussed with the treasurer, but I think is one that the people I would like to point out to people, is unclaimed property. And that sometimes is things like, 
you know, include savings or checking accounts, uncashed checks, matured CDs, things like that. It's amazing how much of that goes astray. And the treasurer's office has worked really hard on making that unclaimed property more claimable, easier for claimants to find it and to get get it. Um, it used to be quite onerous, and they've done a lot of work to simplify that process. And I will put the link there. It's ctbiglist.com, but but they've really done, done incredible work, and I recommend that you... Um, Take a look at that to see if there's anything listed on there. I think my husband did recently, and we discovered our names on there, and so we have a little work to do ourselves. Um, then I want to extend some congratulations, uh, some events I've been to, some I have ahead. Uh, Norfolk Library Associates on their 50th anniversary. It was really fun to be there on a snowy Norfolk night. Um, but also hearing about all the kinds of, you know, curiosity, encouraging, uh, you know, uh, all the kinds of presentations and, and um, talks they've had at the Norfolk Library over the years. It's just fascinating. Um, and that really, I mean, they, their libraries are such important local hubs, I think, more than ever now. They've changed over the years, but but it was really nice to be together there. Uh, and congratulations to, to Stephanie Ingracia of, of Washington, who just won a Connecticut Arts Hero Award for her um, founding of Spring Hill Vineyards and particularly the, uh, the Spring Hill Arts Gathering or SHAG, which is a, a four day festival uh, for arts and community and nature. And uh, it's a really impressive venue. And it was nice to be able to honor her, her and other arts heroes the other night. And then upcoming, Falls Village is about to get an award. Congratulations ahead to Falls Village. Uh, the Secretary of State is presenting one of four democracy cups to uh, Falls Village for having the highest voter, t voter turnout during the 2023 municipal election. So so I'll be there for that. And uh, that's, uh, anyway, coming up next week, I'll put the date out there. Um, so I hope you have a great weekend and see you soon.